Well, hey there, Internet. Got that funk here, and I wanted to finally get around to doing my video response to Freethinker 3161 and his video in defense of the rich. Where, Freethinker, if I'm getting you wrong here, please correct me, but you seem to be saying that uh, high taxes for high earners is somehow penalizing the rich for being rich. You seem to even imply that there's some sort of vindictiveness to this that it's somehow uh, class envy or something like that. You know, maybe there's people out there like that. I don't really know, but I completely disagree with that if, that's, if you think that's what the principle behind it is. And I don't understand why there's any disagreement with the basic premise that people who earn more should pay more. Uh, people who earn more have more to lose if society becomes unstable. And how do we get a stable society? We get a stable society by making sure people's needs are met, their basic needs are met. Those basic needs being, you know, access to food, shelter, um, clothing, personal security, education, and basic health care. You know, if uh, those needs are all met, uh, it's much less likely we'll have a revolution. If those needs are all met, it's much less likely we'll have rampant crime. And if those needs are all met, uh, the people at the bottom end of the uh, pay scale won't necessarily feel as poor as they currently do. Uh, because, you know, when there's basic things that you can't afford to buy uh, on one end of the culture and the other end of the culture can't spend their money as fast as they earn it no matter how hard they try, something's seriously wrong. You know, uh, in a country as wealthy as the United States of America, there's no excuse for people starving. There's no excuse for people uh, having to, you know, sell everything they have because they get ill. It's outrageous, and we could do a lot better than we do. Now, <clears throat> I want to remind you, Freethinker, that back in the 1950s, under Dwight D. Eisenhower as president, um, the United States enjoyed a, a pretty good economic situation. The uh, economy was growing and, you know, uh, I think there was actual, uh, we had more jobs than people to fill the jobs for a while. Uh, a situation which doesn't happen very often, I, I think you'll agree. Anyway, um, my point is taxes were 90% for the highest earners in the 50s or 91% or something. I can't remember, but it's like one or the other. And <laughs> You know, people at the highest earning end of the spectrum were still fucking rich, even though they were paying 90% in taxes. Now, I would agree that 90% taxation is punitive. You know, from my point of view, taxation should never be greater than 50%, because you should never have to give away more than you keep. Um, so, but having said that, 50%, in my opinion, still leaves a lot of scope for tax rising um, from current levels on the very rich. Now Proportional Response did a video that you were responding to basically uh, arguing that the uh, Bush tax cuts having expired um, you know doesn't amount to a tax rise it's just a restoration to the uh, taxes you know prior to the cuts and I completely agree with Greg on that one. So it's not even punitive uh, to restore taxation to what it was supposed to be you know uh, basically uh, the rich people just had a tax sale for the past nine years, you know, and uh, the sale's over. It's time to start paying again. And frankly, I think we should pay a lot more. Having said all that, I also think we should spend a lot less. You know, in that sense, I'm pretty conservative, and we should, you know, stop just, you know, losing trillions of dollars from the defense budget. You know, we should stop just losing billions of dollars from various different programs that just, just vanish somehow. You know, if we could put an end to that kind of thing, then maybe you could make a case for lowering taxes. But until we can make a society where people's needs are basically met and make a society where the political corruption doesn't just waste billions of fucking dollars, then we can talk about how, you know, what levels of taxes we actually need to have. Because at the moment, we don't even really need, we don't even know what the taxes need to be because so much money gets fucking wasted and lost. There's no excuse for that and uh, you know we need to fix all these problems at the same time but in my opinion um, lowering taxes for the very rich is not the answer to any fucking problems. It doesn't solve any problems for anybody except the very rich. 
who, by the way, the very, very rich, you know, can get out of paying an awful lot of taxes because there are a lot of loopholes specifically designed for the very wealthy. So, you know, um, I don't think it really is any sense at all uh, saying that the very rich shouldn't pay a higher proportion of tax than uh, people who are on lower incomes. Um, it's in their interest to live in a safe, secure society where that way they can enjoy their prosperity uh, without any fear. Uh, and if you think that's an overstatement, I mean, look at Latin American countries. I'm not going to name any specific countries, but in certain South American countries, if you make a lot of money, if you're, I mean, you're not even a lot of money, but you know, if you're above the median, then you live in fear of yourself or one of your family members being kidnapped and held for ransom. Happens all the time in certain countries. And it could happen in America. If you keep on letting the fucking disparity between the very rich and the very poor get so outrageous without, uh, you know, <laughs> human beings are human beings and sooner or later uh, the poor will say, fuck this shit, we've had enough. You know? And this is why I think it's in everyone's interest to raise the bottom. Now, Freethinker, you were saying in your video that you sort of sign up to the Reaganomics theory of trickle-down. Well, hey, if trickle-down is such a good fucking idea, why don't we institutionalize that shit? Why don't we basically say that the lowest paid people in a particular company, um, whatever their wage is, the highest paid people in the same company can't make more than, oh, I don't know, 100 times that amount. Or let's say 50 times that amount, or 20 times that amount. That still leaves a lot of scope for variation in the, uh, in the pay structure. And at the same time, make sure that the money does fucking trickle down to the people at the bottom. We institutionalize it. If trickle down is such a good idea. Because, you know, capitalism as it works unchecked uh, rewards greed. That means the people who are re being rewarded aren't really inclined to fucking trickle that shit down. They want to hoard it, you know, and yes, of course they do spend money and put money back into the economy. Of course they do, and of course they invest. I get it, man. But frankly, they need to be able to pay in order to play. It's as simple as that to me. Anyway, this has got that funk. I'm sure I rambled a bit too much there, a bit incoherently, no doubt. Um, but that's all you're going to get from me, guys. Until next time, uh, thanks for watching, and may all your ups and downs be ups.